Hi everybody, here we are to talk about topic two. So a little video introduction to kind of let you see the lay of the land in topic two. This is probably the most intense topic area of the course because we have so much to cover in terms of not only the concepts, but the assignments themselves. This is really the, the this is the fundamental area of public relations writing, right in this topic two area, because you're dealing with the backgrounder and the pitch and the first draft of the news release, and you're dealing with the AP style quizzes, and you're dealing with the social media posts, and you know, when you look at the at the concept readings in this area, there's gotta be concept readings to support all of that. So you may feel like topic two is kicking your ass. And well, yeah, topic two is kicking your ass because there's a lot of stuff in this area. But um, so just try to approach it from the mindset that there, there are still similarities in all of these things that you're doing. And the similarities are the things that we developed in topic area number one. First, before we go into any writing situation, we have to think about who am I writing for? What do they already know? Am I trying to just inform them or am I trying to persuade them? Am I trying to change their mind? What am I doing? And then what's the organization that I'm writing on behalf of? If I'm submitting a news release on behalf of an organization, what's this organization all about? What's their structure? How do they make decisions? How are they thinking ethically? You want to put your mind in the same mindset as the organization that you're writing for. And then you want to think about this thing that I'm writing as a tool. How is it going to get delivered to the people that I want to get it to? So if your tool is a news release, are you writing a news release directly for the readers of newspapers? No, you're not. You're writing the news release to go to the gatekeepers who control the content that goes in the newspapers. And a lot of times students forget that. You know, you're not writing a news release to go into the hands of a reader or an audience member. You're writing a news release to go into the hands of a journalist, a gatekeeper. What is that person thinking about? They're thinking about interesting, relevant news stories for their audience members. So the person you're persuading is the gatekeeper. You've got to think like they think. Don't write all this flowery language and all these exclamation points, you know, uh, exclamation marks. Don't fill it with that kind of stuff because journalists are cynical people. I was a journalist for many years. Do I look cynical? <laughs> I'm cynical because I've seen it all, okay? I've seen it all. I've worked in newspapers. I've worked in television. I've worked in radio. I've seen it all. And, you know, I'm not impressed by exclamation marks, and I'm not impressed by flowery language because I see that as just bullshit. And so um, you as the public relations person, when you write to somebody like that, to that, that jaded journalist type, you've got to persuade them in a way that's real. Okay, you've got to be real. And you've got to show them how this news release, since this is the example we're using, show them how this news release is helping them do their job. Because journalists are busy people, and you want to help them do their job. And you don't want to say, I'm helping you do your job, because that makes you look like a little weasel, and they don't like that. So you have to do it implicitly. You have to do it subtly. You have to give them this news release that's really interesting, potentially, to their audience members, and it's structured in a way where it makes sense, and it's an interesting read, and it's not full of hype and flowery language, and it just tells a really simple, easy story that their audience members would be interested in, and it's in correct AP style. So they don't have to do a lot to it. They can just send it on through the gate, you know? Um, that's, what, that's what these journalists are looking for, and so we wanna help them do their job. And so um, the same is true with social media, but in a different way. And the same is true for broadcasters, and we'll deal with that in the next topic area, but in a different way. And so that's probably the most important overriding mindset in this topic area is put your mind 
in the place where these gatekeepers' minds are. And then when we talk about social media, and you know this from being social media natives, put your mind in the place where those followers are. Put your mind where they are and tell stories that are interesting to them. Um, as an example, um, the Department of Communications Facebook page. I oversee the Facebook page. Um, and so when I think about posting things on Facebook, I want to post stories that are interesting to people who are in a mindset for the Department of Communications. We have alumni who follow us, we have students who follow us, we have faculty and staff who follow us, we have university administrators, we have members of the general public who follow us. And they, they want to know what we're doing. So I want to be in that mindset. I want to tell simple little stories about communications, about faculty and staff and fun things that are happening in the department. And you know, every now and then I put something on there that's just silly because you know it makes people smile. Um, I try not to get heavy. I try not to tell really serious stories. Every now and then I, I like to put little learning things, things about communication that we can learn, stories in the news. We can learn from this. You know, some celebrity makes a big social media faux pas. It's something we can learn from. But I have to be careful because I don't want anything to be in a political, I don't want to look political. I don't want to look like I'm supporting some celebrity or I'm bashing some celebrity. So anytime I put something in there that's, you know, hey, we can learn from this, I have to phrase it really carefully because I don't want to offend people. I want the story to be about communications and not about some point of view of the gatekeeper, in this case, me being the gatekeeper. So these are the kinds of things we think about. So. You know, I think what you're finding, I hope what you're finding, is that there's a lot more to PR writing than just sitting down and going, you know, and, and writing copy and then go, okay, I'm done now and on to the next assignment. There's a lot more to it than that. We have to really have a lot of background thinking involved. And I think some of the items that I've got on Titanium this week will kind of illustrate that. The, the one about UC Davis, and UC Davis has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to scrub an image from the internet and they can't get rid of it. Um, it's an image of, you know, a, a, a campus cop doing something that wasn't really nice. And, and so, you know, that's a concept issue. The, the concept of photo manipulation, you know, taking images and, you know, it's fun to do photo manipulation for feature photos. When you do it for news, then people think you're fooling them. And that's something that relates directly to PR writing because if we put our really good copy alongside a manipulated photo, that can be really problematic. So that's another kind of concept issue we have to think about. And, and this whole idea of branding. I've got an item on Titanium about, about a businessman who killed his brand because he appeared in a photo with President Trump. Now, you know, there, I don't want to get political, but the fact of the matter is Trump is not very popular among a whole lot of people. And if you decide to go to an executive order signing with President Trump, you know photos are going to be taken. And if you're a business person, you know the people are going to have opinions about it. So do you want to put yourself out there or do you want to just not do that? And so, you know, these are the, the deeper issues that go behind public relations writing that we really have to be thoughtful about going into this profession. And, and none of this guarantees that you're not going to make a mistake. We all make mistakes. We all do things that, you know, we regret later. But the more you can think about it before you make the decision, the less likely you are to make a decision that puts you in hot water. And so that's kind of background here. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, again, back to the news release, this is going to be a drafting assignment. So you're going to draft your first copy. You're going to submit it. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to make suggestions and perhaps some revisions. And then you're going to go back and write a final copy that will be turned in later. Please pay a lot of attention to the feedback that you get from me. And also, even if I don't circle something as problematic, between now, the first draft, and later, the final draft, 
put some more thought to that anyway, because just the passage of time may allow you to change your mind on some things that you write in that news release, and that's okay. In fact, I would encourage that. You know, any time that you can allow the passage of time between when you write something and when you use it, that's going to be helpful. Um, I find that if I have a day or two before something is due, that I can write it and then set it aside, go do other stuff, and then come back to it, I will see it in much fresher eyes than I did the first time around. So even though this is a, a condensed course, I want you to build yourself in as much time as possible to work on your assignments because the passage of time will help you see things clearly and write better. So those are my suggestions for topic two. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm here to help you succeed. Thank you.